If you're anything like me, then you probably found Yakuza 0 on the Steam store. A friend might have told you about it, or you just found out about it online. Seeing as it's pretty damn cheap, you buy it up, and then... After your first taste of the Kuza, you are satisfied and had a fantastic time the whole playthrough. So you get up and you lie down ready for a lovely night of sleep. That's a joke. You've purchased an entire lifetime supply of caffeine and drink non-stop until the other games drop below a 1% discount. You then spend the entirety of the next year grinding. Finally, you arrive at the end of your journey. All upgrades unlocked, all sub-stories finished, karaoke sung. The like 15 goddamn hostess club games completed like, with nothing left to do. You turn to the Steam store to try and find something, anything that'll fill the void until the next game. But nothing seems interesting anymore. The only games that people are playing are either free battle royales, just super expensive, or a soulless copy of a game that worked before. Hell, sometimes even all three of those at the same time. Well, don't you worry, you sport little brat, because I've done the hard work for you. I've trawled through the Steam store, analyzed the sales, and picked out a few games that I think you might like. Before I recommend some of these games, I am a human and even if I objectively have the best opinion, my opinion is still subjective. And in my opinion, I think that these games are all great. Uh, some criteria that I had for picking out these games were the gameplay similarity, meaning that combat must be remotely similar to combat in the arc of the games. Don't worry, I'm not counting sevens. It's absolutely got to have a good storyline and characters, because I mean, like, come on, when is Yakuza's story ever bad? Uh, <laughs> But on a real note, the characters in Yakuza have to be some of the best in the business, making this a hard requirement for all the games. And finally, we have the experience, which is basically all the other elements of gameplay that could make a game great, such as, you know, the soundtrack, the voice acting, graphics, cutscenes, and really just anything that could sell me on a game. All right, well, how about we start with... Okay, that was a joke. You've already played Judgment. <laughs> okay, get God. But in case you haven't, why not? It's basically the same as the Yakuza games, made by the same people, same studio, just different setting and characters. For real. Play it. If you haven't already, that will fill the hole. Okay, now look, I can already imagine what people might say about this. Damn cow, starting strong with the anime stuff. Listen, you little prick, you and I are both in the exact same situation. You sat down for an entire year watching a Japanese dude run around a fucking street. Scarlet Nexus is a pretty fun game. Uh, damn, who <laughs> would have thought about that? Oh, this script shit. Oh, fuck, alright. To sum up Scarlet Nexus, it is an anime inspired action game, with combos being a core part of its gameplay. It's a bit slower than the combat that I was used to in Yakuza, but I still find myself enjoying it. A unique take in its combat system that really sets it apart from the other brawler type games would be its heat bar. Uh, sorry, I mean heat gauge. I mean, sorry, I mean the psychokinesis gauge. Damn, that took a bit to get out. Jokes aside, though, it does add some genuinely unique gameplay, allowing you to chain your combos together with follow-up attacks, smashes, and in general, just interesting ways to try and continue to deal as much damage as constantly possible. Outside of this, the combat is, in general, a bit more positioning based, at least on the hardest difficulty. You already know I cranked that shit up. With enemies absolutely melting you on every hit you take. Your light attacks keep you roughly in the same place, your special attacks back you up to a certain distance and charges the psychokinesis gauge. You've got a dash, a jump, there you go, that's not in Yakuza. Uh, a psychokinesis attack that does a lot of damage and allows you to perform a follow-up attack, which is literally just placing you in the exact worst point whenever you attack an enemy. Like every time you don't want to be there. The combat is pretty open-ended. And that's not even getting into all the bonuses that you can get from party members who, to be honest, aren't all that helpful in like the raw sense, but I mean, they exist and do occasionally throw heals at you when you fuck up really bad. For gameplay, I give this four Kuzades out of 17 Dargos. If you thought I didn't have a scale for this, you're damn right, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> As for characters and storyline, I won't spoil the story, but it's pretty damn solid. A little bit slow to start off, but still very nice. And there are even two protagonists to play as to experience the main storyline as well. 
Just to let you know, I haven't played as the guy yet, but from what I hear, it's an alternative perspective on the exact same storyline, but just with different combat, which is pretty cool. There are a wide cast of allies and side characters as well, with a bond system similar to that of Yakuza 7's, which is pretty interesting. One Monancho out of three Shure PPs. As for any other notable features this game has, the art style is basically the same as any other anime game, but some of the effects and weapon attacks in particular look really cool. The soundtrack is also very nice, playing into the futuristic setting with some electronic tracks and that can either get you absolutely hyped or make you feel like you're that one lo-fi girl. Voice acting is also pretty solid with both Japanese and English as options, but of course sub is better in my objectively superior subject of opinion. Throwing no shade on the English voice actors, but I mean, come on, it is what it is. <laughs> well, let's take a step back from anime looking games and go with something that I'm sure you're able to recognize, at least in part. Ah, Metal Gear Rising, one of the most memed games in existence. Despite the constant mockery this game receives by fans of cohesive plot lines and logical characters, this game is an easy recommend for any Yakuza fans. The combat is fast paced, the music slaps, and the characters are... edgy? Kinda? Despite this game being written by some random emo kid the devs kidnapped while he was heading towards the school bathroom, the characters are still genuinely interesting, despite some of the backstories not making much sense whatsoever, and some of the most outrageous one-liners coming from their dialogue. It's about to skyrocket, like the good old days after 9-11. What are you talking about? Okay, sure, the story kinda stinks, and while the characterization isn't exactly good, so to speak, it still makes for one hell of an experience where you throw away everything you know about what makes a good story, and you never pay any attention to it at all. The gameplay in Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is fluid, and trust me when I say this, the combos are responsive, dynamic, intense, and fast. While there isn't actually much in the way of customizing the way you fight outside of upgrading abilities, it's still a pretty fun system of fighting. There is also a heat but you know, I think I'm starting to pick up on a pattern. The fuel cell gauge basically allows you to enter bullet time and slash precisely at weak points and targets to harvest their organs and recharge the gauge or to fight bosses. The storyline is bad. <laughs> the characters in this game go crazy. As long as you can ignore the existence of pretty much every single one of the forgettable side character allies. Like, I only know one of their names, and it's because of this line. Doctor, turn off my pain inhibitors. What? This, this is madness. You do it. No, 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 no. The good characters are not on your side. Rather, they are the bosses that you fight. Despite most of them being more brain dead than an Australian Christmas beetle, there's just something about their ridiculousness that makes them so memorable. Oh, that might have something to do with it. The soundtrack in this game, paired with its gameplay and cinematic boss designs, is easily one of the most noteworthy parts of the game, boasting some absolute bangers that hype you up for the next fight. Other than that, the voice acting isn't really all that praiseworthy, like, I mean, it's not bad, don't get me wrong, but it's no Kuze if you know what I'm saying. Either way, good fun. One fly out of collision of our souls. That does it for the moment. If you feel like checking out any of these games, make sure to go to the Steam store. They're on sale pretty regularly for a pretty damn cheap price as well. Okay, that's the whole video done, all the games covered in just... Wow, okay. I'm really bad at keeping these things short. And we only covered two games! Oh well, I guess that does save plenty for next time. Winky face. <laughs> if you want to see more of these games, YouTube does have a button dedicated specifically for that. I mean, if you don't want to, you don't have to. But it would make me grin a little bit. And honestly, you having the power and authority to control a man's actions potentially halfway across the globe both frightens me and makes me do a little jig. Besides, subscribing lets me know that you want me to make another one of these videos, and if you like, then more I will make. Until then, I'm going to go back to my routine of staring at my wardrobe and envisioning Daigo in my brain until Ishin comes out. See ya.